for the start of the Monday matinee at Watkins Glen. Kyle Busch and A.J. Allmendinger bring him down to the green flag. Almendinger gets the lead from Kyle Busch. That's an aggressive move on the outside through turn one and off the turn one up yeah. the S's. I thought he'd had enough was going out the gate down there. <laughs> My gosh, he used up a lot of room, but was in the gas that whole time. Inner loop, first time. See, he passed Kyle Busch on the start of a race. You've done something. I've heard a lot of people talk about this 43 car being extremely fast all weekend. Their concern was, is he going to be able to keep that speed up throughout a run? Exit turn five, some call it the carousel, some the outer loop. And that run down the third straightaway to turn six and seven, the finishing corners. And the track conditions got to be pretty ideal for high speed, so we'll see these lap times be pretty fast. And then Tony, I heard Tony Stewart say that the tire's softer, and we'll see, you can see water kicking up right there in those ripple strips coming off the last corner. We saw these drivers going all the way out beside the, the safer barrier. You see Marcus Ambrose take over that second spot from Kyle Busch. Richard Petty's cars are one, two as they come off turn one. Ambrose, the Australian, so good at Watkins Glen. Three nationwide series wins, three top three finishes in Sprint Cup competition, but none of them a win. See some drops on some of the camera lenses. There are sprinkles and showers all around the area. Some trouble right here. More said getting maybe turned a little bit by Jamie McMurray. There's going to be a local caution. He'll get back going. Watch that lens. Just hold on. Be careful. We'll have to look at it. I said that there were, it looked like contact as they entered there. And a lot of that can happen as you get in trying to make a pass. One of the favorite areas these drivers see if there was or if force just got in there a little hot yeah I believe he was just in there over his head maybe a little bit of wheel hop and I don't think that Jamie had anything to do with that except dodging so Kurt Busch now back in front of the race leader let's show you what happened out of the inner loop just a minute ago we told you this is going to be exciting all day didn't take long for it to happen here see he was sandwiched the leader Almendinger was sandwiched between Boris said who was tail end of the lead lap and Kurt Busch who was a lap down. He was in a no win situation right there. Kurt was ready to go in this corner a little deeper to see bumps Almendinger and you just you can't stop. AJ just trying to keep it straight. He was just in a bad spot unfortunately for him. Kurt Busch was needing to go. Almendinger on pit road Dick. Richie Greg Irwin said this was their best shot at a first win to possibly be a wild card entrant. This will put him behind for now. We'll see if the strategy can possibly work out. Obviously, the race car very fast. A clean grill now. Temperatures up to 300, Allen, before he came down pit road. They're still trying to make sure that's right. Two guys that raced for the win last year. Ambrose and Montoya racing for the lead now. about a huge break for Dale Jr. there in that fourth spot. As he tries to stay inside the top 10 in the points, he needs to now take advantage of that great opportunity. See he was what in, he can do. He was in 12th place when they ducked down pit road and got there just before that caution wave. Well, now they have their track position. Now it's a matter of taking care of the car, doing the right things, and, and not making a mistake. He's got to run good laps, though, because he's got fast cars behind him, and if he's not able to keep pace, it could still get him in trouble. Somebody could knock him off the track. So a lot of pressure on him right here. Kirk Bush in the 22 car. You see back in traffic again, but he was able to stay on the lead lap. That and they, last run. And they took some time under that caution to make repairs to the left front that got torn up earlier in the race with his lap three spin out at the inner loop. Martin Truex here as we look back to Jimmy Johnson. Martin having a great day. He has a very fast race car. You know, we were talking about Martin earlier among ourselves as Kyle Busch looks to make a move and gain some of that track position lost to the strategy. Martin had a great run going out at the other road course on the circuit uh, at uh, Infineon Raceway in Sonoma, California. And in all the craziness that happened in the last laps there with people getting knocked off the course left and right, 
Like this? Like that? His teammate there. You're all good. 47's coming hard here. It's coming around your outside of you. Coming outside of you, are all clear. Pretty good damage to Rudiman's car. Like, might have got clipped as he got sideways. Somebody coming by there. By the way, to finish the, the, the story on Truex, he finished eighth in that race out in California. What happened to Rudiman? Well, he gets turned a little bit. Well, that's why he spun. Well, he just well, didn't give Mark enough room. He, I mean, yeah. Mark did get into him, but he didn't give him much clear. room. Mark was in there. Keselowski has closed the gap on Kyle just a little bit. It's been about a tenth, tenth and a half quicker. And I, I don't like that right there. I see that yeah. inside tire on Kyle's car locking up, and I'll tell you, that's going to cause him problems as this race goes on because he's only on that, you know, two-stop strategy. He has to take care of these front tires. Let's talk uh, strategy and driver condition on this two-car, Doc. Yeah, again, reminding the folks at home that he is driving with an injured lower back. His feet are better. And, you know, watch how smooth the two car is. You know, he says the only pain he feels in the car is when the car gets up and lands on the racetrack off those strips. He is trying to be deliberately very smooth and also on a little bit different strategy. Listen in. No, those are the leaders right here in front of you. But if you could go in a little conservative mode, that'd be great. I mean, I'm short shifting here for you and listen early. So trying to save fuel and be conservative and short shifting, and guess what? He has closed in on Kyle Busch by doing all that driving smooth, taking it easy on his back, and also short shifting. Guys, hey, what do they say, guys? The shorter oh, it is, the quicker you are. Trouble, Trouble. Doc. Kurt Busch into the barrier. The tire guys were in the fence. Their day's done. Yeah, yeah, he's he done. He blew his, a tire there. That car is shortened up. Kurt was running 17th at the time. And that is a pretty heavy hit at yeah. turn number five. Go to the garage. Yeah, yeah you got left front down. Yeah, you're under full power here. Yeah, man, good thing those tires were there. Andy, he's another driver that we've seen a few times smoke that left front getting down into these corner, these high braking areas. You can see right when that tire went down. You put on oh. the brakes all you want. You just can't stop soon enough. And the leader pits and a pile of the front running cars. Keslowski, Kyle Busch, Truex, Stewart, Burton, Harvick, Logano all in, Doc. Brad Keslowski slides the tires to a stop. He says three words, car is awesome. Left side tires on, right side tires going in. Let's check in with Vince. The 18 of Kyle Busch, it's a little tight in the carousel and a little tight in turn six. They talked about a wedge adjustment, but decided against it. Just an air pressure adjustment for the 18, and he's going to beat out the two car. That caution comes out now. It's going to really put Ambrose and the car cars that are yet to make a stop in trouble. 14, slow again on pit road. I don't know if that was just to make sure they got all the fuel in there they possibly could. Matt Kenseth did make it back around to pit road after the push from Greg Biffle. Yeah, it is. It is Kyle ahead of Brad by about three quarters of a second. So when will, there is uh, the not the 18 and the two kind of a picture we saw for quite a while earlier. I think they're both going to have to be in a little bit of a conservative mode for the time being. They know as all this cycles through, they should come out and, and be the leaders once again. They should have a pretty good idea on what their mileage is now. They've made a couple of stops. They've made actually their last stop so they can see just exactly how far they think they can go. And then they can advise their drivers if they need to save fuel. Boy, it's just so hard as a driver. We've talked all year about these drivers saving fuels on the ovals, but it is such a difficult task doing this as a driver on the road course. So when will we see Ambrose Pitt? Where will that place him in relation to Kyle Busch? Kyle should get the lead on the he should have about a, of pit stops. He should have about a seven or eight second lead after they make this pit stop, assuming that they have a clean stop, the Ambrose team and, and Montoya. 
So what, what Ambrose needs just to kind of sum up is to get on and off pit road, get it full of fuel, then have the caution come out to close him up. Yeah, he's running extremely fast laps here too for as many laps as he has on these tires. Down under the 72 second bracket. And when Kyle was out leading the race, he was mostly in the 72 30s and 40 range. Yeah, the problem is, as you see Kyle Busch and Keselowski running 71 teams. Yeah. Of course, Ambrose yeah. will too once he goes back out with these fresh tires he's coming to get. He was about seven seconds behind before the leaders pitted. Dave? And he's in his comfort zone, guys. No complaints about the race car. They'll get four fresh tires, actually, maybe two. And they'll go for all four because they got to fill this thing really full of fuel. Remember, their fuel mileage, not as good as some. Jamie McMurray also on pit road. Doc. Montoya's crew has been absolutely outstanding on pit road today. Left side tires. You're going to go ahead and put all four on it. Got to get it full of fuel. He could actually go about seven or eight more laps. Hold it earlier because why waste time on used tires? Good stuff again. He's down on the way. He and Ambrose headed to the end. Right? And there you see Kyle Busch and Keselowski already through turn one while the 9 and the 42 still work pit road speed. And there they come back onto the racetrack. That was a little aggressive there, pit exit for Montoya. Huh? Yeah, and he's wanting to get by while he's got these fresh tires if at all possible. 26 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson, the leader. Final stop still playing out. Will the caution wave again and change the whole picture around?